We really respect the traditional car industry. We are not part of those guys that say, okay, they didn't understand anything, we're going to change everything. The traditional car makers know very well that this change is coming. And they are analyzing and they are moving fast. But they have a huge inertia because of their industrial legacy. Hello and welcome to a new video here at Robin TV. And here you find all the important information about electromobility and you get the best person, the most interesting person. Right next to me is David. Can you please introduce yourself? Of course, my name is David Tuig and I've got the coolest job in the world because I'm Chief Vehicle Engineer here at Byton. Oh yeah, we are here at the Byton booth at the CES in Las Vegas and so you show great cars, also autonomous cars so, and connected cars, so it's really the, the newest technical innovations in the automotive industries. So can you tell us a little bit more like where you come from? So you always did this fancy stuff or you also did some other stuff before? did some fancy stuff, but I'm a traditional car guy. So Byton's a little bit unique because we've got a blend of guys coming from the traditional car industry like myself, but also the best of the tech heads in Silicon Valley and also the best of China. So it's quite a unique blend. So my personal background, I was 26 years with the Nissan Renault Alliance and one of the vehicles that I worked on and very proud to have worked on, it's my second baby and it was the Renault Zoe, which I think your, your viewers know very well. David is like a perfect example for someone who is like coming from the traditional car companies, is now like, he's now totally on a different way with Byton for like the future of automobility. So I want to talk in this video a little bit more about the, the change that is like going on in the industry. It's like everybody is talking about like, it's so much disruption, Every the, the business models are changing, like a car is not defined by horsepower, anymore it's more about in the future about like which sensors you have how much CPU power you have and so can you give, give us a little bit like of a, of a, like a, an insight so what what was the industry before or the last decades and how is it changing now what is your just tell give us a little bit of insight of like how you feel about it yeah I think we genuinely are at the biggest revolution in the car industry since I would say 1910 you know this is the biggest disruption that's going to happen and you put your finger on a few of the key points we at Byton we're not just developing an electric vehicle all right electric vehicles they are already exist there's really good ones out there uh, there's ones made by a certain Californian company that starts with a T there's the Renault Zoe it's a great car you can buy one there's a Nissan Leaf there's a Jaguar I-Pace I hear it's a great car so we're not launching another electric vehicle we often use this phrase smart device on wheels to uh, summarize the breakthrough but you know there's another little device that summarizes the breakthrough which is I got one here right yeah. so this little thing was launched in 2005 and before that people thought telephones were for making telephone calls right or maybe making an SMS look how this changed the world so yeah. we're at that point now in cars in 2019 Okay, so, but um, is this also like, we talk a lot now about like features, about like technical stuff that is changing, but my opinion is also that actually the whole culture, the whole, the whole thinking of the industry is changing. What, what is so different um, from your previous um, jobs to now? Yeah, there's, there's two things coming together. It's a kind of perfect storm, right? There's some technological breakthroughs in recent years and there's a social pull. So the technological breakthroughs, you guys know them, right? It's cheaper computer power, it's great connectors, it's great sensors. All of these technologies are now affordable so that we can put what was a supercomputer a few years ago into an affordable car. Okay, so these are the technical push factors, let us say. Now if we look at the social factors, people are more and more open to shared mobility. Uh, especially younger folks, you guys are younger than me. Um, the idea of owning a car is no longer an absolute must. Sharing cars, ride sharing, I mean, that is the future. So you've got these two things coming together. And Byton are part of the generation of companies that are taking this push factor, pull factor, and hopefully changing the world. And uh, we have new companies like Byton that they are totally different. They do everything different from the scratch. But what do you think about the old car manufacturers? With old, I don't mean that they are like dinosaurs, but they have like some dinosaur technology and 
of course they all have to change. Yeah. So how you think about that? Do they have really do they have a real chance to also play in that new game? Absolutely, and we're here in CES, and what's really exciting is you've got the tech companies, you've got the new players like Byton, but you also got the Daimler-Benz, you've got Honda, you've got Nissan, you've got everybody. So we at Byton, we really respect the traditional car industry. We are not part of those guys that say, okay, they didn't understand anything, we're going to change everything. The traditional car makers know very well that this change is coming, and they are analyzing and they are moving fast, but they have a huge inertia because of their industrial legacy. They have existing plans, they have existing platforms, and it's very difficult for them to change fast enough. But we in Byton, we think we can sprint pretty fast, but let's not underestimate the existing car makers because there's a hell of a lot of clever guys and girls also trying to go as fast as they can. So can you give us a little bit of an insight? How, how was your work uh, working at the Renault Zoe? Because like you all already told, there's so many people that are watching this video um, which are driving a Renault Zoe. And now to get to know someone who was really like a very important figure in this whole development of the Renault Zoe, please give us a little bit of insight. What was the uh, intention of doing this car? Because Renault was very, very um, early on the market. Absolutely, and I think, you know, to, to tell that story briefly, we have to go back to 2007. Now, this is the prehistory of electric vehicles, okay? Electric vehicles were just not a subject in 2007. Tesla were building the Roadster and, okay, doing something, but there was nothing seriously out there. And Renault Nissan at the time said, guys, we're going to spend $5 billion dollars in electric vehicles. Everybody laughed. Everybody said, these guys are crazy, right? So the Nissan Leaf was launched in 2010. And I was lucky enough in 2007 to be appointed chief vehicle engineer to do Renault's first purpose-built and affordable, this is a key word, oh, yeah. electric vehicle. And the next five years were just incredible. I was uh, leading this super passionate team. Okay, a huge team because this is traditional car makers, right? And we designed the car from, from ground up, encountering a lot of challenges which are easy to solve in 2018, 2019, not so easy in 2007. And luckily, The product seems to have appealed to a lot of folks. I'm very proud that it's a car that is not an elitist product. You don't have to be rich to drive and own a Zoe. It's a, it's, it's a car for everybody. And I'm particularly proud of the fact that it's got quite a decent chassis, actually. <laughs> But was it like a tryout of Renault? to say like, okay, maybe let's try out if people want to have an electric car? Or was it like the start of a, of a new era? No, it definitely wasn't a tryout. And again, you know, the, the history books can, can show this now, but again, the, the, the Nissan Renault Alliance was, I, I think they maybe don't get enough credit for this. They were incredibly bold. This was not a couple of hundred million dollars investments. Let's see how it goes, right? This was five billion dollars at the time with a pretty massive attack, Nissan Leaf on the Nissan side and three vehicles on the Renault side, the Zoe, the Fluence, Kangoo, and I've forgotten Tweezy, four vehicles. So this was pretty brave. It wasn't just testing the waters. This was a massive assault on the market and it's established them as the market leaders. Okay, they're not the most glamorous. They don't get the headlines, but you know, um, those vehicles showed to ordinary folks that driving and owning an EV every day is possible. And so you're more like a technical guy, right? Yeah, my background, I'm actually an electronics engineer. Um, so my training is electronics. And through time in the car industry, you know, I've learned the other skills, the mechanical skills about chassis, braking systems, body structures, etc. But I'm an electronics engineer at heart. What do you think are the, the hardest challenges on developing an electric car? Mm. Actually, the hardest challenges are things people don't automatically think about. So everybody thinks, well, it's got to be the battery and motors, right? But not really. That's actually rather simple. The things that are complex are the things that go around the car the so-called peripherals, which are easy to do on an internal combustion engine. Let me give you two examples. Heating the occupants, all right? It's easy in an internal combustion engine because you got 60% of the waste is just heat. But how to heat the occupants in, in a, an electric vehicle efficiently, this is not easy. So you come into technology like heat pumps and clever systems like that. Second system, braking. Okay, you can have electrically assisted braking, but what happens if the 400 battery 400 volt battery is lost. What if there's a 400 battery failure or the DC-DC converter comes down? How do you organize and how do you design the backup systems? 
These are not trivial engineering challenges, and that's where the true know-how lies. Okay, very, very interesting. So, what do you think are the next next uh, things that will happen? What 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 are the next um, steps in the industry? Because like Python is, I think, on a good track. <laughs> I can I cannot like uh, uh, yeah. Maybe we can also talk like about about more about like the whole industry. What what happens in the industry? What do you think like is 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 coming next? What 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 will happen? Yeah. So. You're right to switch the subject there because you know I'm talking about batteries, braking, aircon. These challenges are solved. They were solved a few years ago. But if I look at the vehicle behind me, it's really launching towards the next challenge. And if we project ourselves forward, let's say 10 years, we really are in a, in a time when shared mobility is going to be a reality. Okay? That means less cars on the road, less traffic jams. We don't need car parks anymore. You probably aren't going to own a car anymore. That's a total disruption, not only technically, but on the business plan. So the companies that have made a business for 100 years selling you 1.5 tons of metal yeah. with an 8 to 10% profit margin, that's not going to last. Yeah. So there's a business disruption and there's a technical disruption. And the vehicles we're showing here, M-Byte and K-Byte, are major steps towards that future. Is there something I uh, forgot about to ask you, something that you think is super important to talk about? So I think on the end, but we probably didn't talk enough about, you know, this way of interacting with the car. You know, everybody's seen this fantastic 48-inch yeah. display, and, you know, that's what jumps out at you. But it's that hides behind it this um, rather complex engineering system of how to interact with your car with five ways of interacting facial recognition by the way this is not a gimmick this is absolutely key to shared mobility in the future voice recognition which is not the clunky stuff we've got in your car today but state-of-the-art touch interfaces with touch screens with the language we've all got to used to right pinch to zoom double tap swipe etc gesture recognition rather cool feature where I can make gesture signs in the air and control the car and finally I got some good old-fashioned buttons in there so you think like in, in, the, in the next years, in the future, we will talk much more about like how you interact with your car, how, you, how the experience in the car is, and what else? I mean, you, you said it yourself, in the past, and I'm an old dinosaur of the car industry, right? I love to talk about zero to 100 kph and right and handling and limit on the oversteer, understeer, all that good stuff. We're not going to talk about that in the future. We're going to talk about connectivity, the quality of the experience you have in the car, how this car saves you time and what what interesting activities you can do in the car and again these technical building blocks we're working on and showing here at NCES they're going to get us to that future very quickly so i can imagine that you as a technical guy you are like okay um in the last decades i cared about like mechanical stuff like uh, engines like parts that are moving and now you're much more about like digital stuff user experience stuff so also your job seemed to change a lot completely my job i, I mentioned again i really think we're in a period where the car industry is, is in a rupture. And the engine, if you think of the car engineers who are working on cars in between 1900 and 1920, imagine the changes those guys saw, right? From a single cylinder Benz to cars like the Model T, right? Or cars like the, the iconic cars of the 20s. It's the same. Engineers, our job is changing at a, a, a rate we never imagined, you know? So the mechanical engineers must learn about electronics. The electronic engineers like myself must fully understand mechanical systems. You know, the car really is a, a mechatronic system now. Huge challenge for engineers and hopefully giving huge benefits to the customers. Yeah, but it's also like, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, it's so disruptive and it's destroying a lot of like um, working. Uh, so the people get uh, unemployed because like they don't know what to do in the future. But I think you're an example of someone who's like, yeah, you educate yourself to uh, another era. So what would you say to those people who are like, afraid they lose their job like a lot of German um, companies rely on all those stuff so what would you say to them we're here in, C in CES Vegas is 2019 okay let me take you back to another auto show the Detroit Auto Show in 1910 okay in 1910 there were still a lot of people thought the automobile could not work okay because it would scare the horses 
Big, seriously. And there were laws in certain countries where you still could not drive above 10 miles an hour, okay? There was a serious social movement to say the automobile is a dangerous thing, it cannot work, okay? But at the Detroit Auto Show, there were a hundred car makers showing cars. There were, there were pioneers who believed in the future of this car, of this industry. Look where we, look where we spent for the next hundred years. So to those who are afraid of the future, I say, we didn't kill all the horses. They were okay. <laughs> okay. So you think there's like an opportunity for everybody, but I, but maybe you have to be open, you have to like change your mindset, change your um, abilities because they are used to, they did a good work for maybe 20, 30 years and they're expert in their area and now they have to compete with other people who are like maybe better. Absolutely, but you know, again, I come from the traditional car industry and I worked, as I've said, Japanese and French car industries. The German car industry was my competitor for years and I can tell you as a professional car engineer, I had and I have nothing but admiration for the German car industry, okay? There are many thousands of very talented and very passionate people working in the German car industry. Those guys and girls are going to have great ideas and build a great future. So there really is nothing but opportunity here. There is nothing to be afraid of. Things are going to change. Some companies will, will fall. Some companies will be created. But I genuinely believe that, you know, we're going towards a better future here. So that's perfect, perfect ending. I couldn't say it better. So thank you so much for watching. David, thank you so much for your my honest pleasure. words. It was my pleasure. All right. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching this video. Please place your comments under the video. If you have some more questions, some comments, let's talk about it. And the next time we see each other, I will confront you with some of the um, feedback. All right. Be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. For... Bye-bye. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Do you have one time?